Hey guys, I'm Bobby. So years ago when I was in seventh grade, I joined the lacrosse team. Now I was in a brand new school, brand new state, brand new community, and I knew that this was the move to make, right? So I joined the lacrosse team and I saw that there was one player named Kyle. All right, now he was the team captain. Now everybody knew him and he got to do everything. I mean everything from the team chance to taking the last shot of the goal to starting on the team first every single game. He got to do every single thing. Now this was so frustrating. Now it wasn't until two or three games in when I was on the sidelines and I looked to the left and I saw that Kyle was on the sidelines as well. And it wasn't until Kyle said these exact words. He looked up to the head coach and he said, dad, put me in. Literally, my reaction was like, what? Oh my goodness. Why did this happen? The only reason he was able to do the team chance to play the game first, to take the final shot, was because his dad was the head coach. Now, this was so frustrating. This made me angry. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced something like what I just shared, but what I experienced was totally unfair. It was an injustice I experienced, and I knew it wasn't right. See, injustices are the things in this world that are unfair, unequal, and not right. So when we see someone bullied at school for the way that they look or talk, that's an injustice. Or making assumptions about someone based on the color of their skin, that's an injustice. Or students that go to sleep hungry and don't have enough to eat, that's an injustice. What about people stuck in a lifetime of poverty? That's an injustice. Injustices are the kinds of things that when they happen, they make us stop and say, wait a minute, that's not right. Someone should do something about that. Some of us know injustice because we've seen it. Some of us know injustice because we've heard it. And others of us, well, we know injustice because we've experienced it. Maybe that's you. Maybe you were here last week and thought, so we need to see injustice before we can do anything about it. That's great and all, but what about me? I'm living in the middle of injustice. It's happening to me, what am I supposed to do? Unfortunately, I think that's a question we have to ask. Because for some of us, injustice isn't just something that happens to someone else. It's something that we've experienced before or are experiencing right now. Like get this, did you know that some schools can't afford to give students laptops to do work while others can? Or that some students can't afford a tutor while some families can? Or did you know that some students' families can't afford clothes so they have to wear the same clothes for multiple days in a row? Or that some families can't afford for students to play sports or participate in a hobby? Some families are struggling to even pay for bills or provide food for everyone. And some people your age have been taken away from their families and their parents and placed into the care of someone else. There are people just like you have been abused or mistreated or hurt. And some people are made fun of because of the neighborhood that they live in. Like have you seen people getting bullied in person or on social media? Or have you seen people say awful things to or about others or judge you or the people you love or discriminate against each other just because of their race? No matter what the injustice is, if you've seen it or have experienced it, then you know how unfair, how painful, and how hurtful it feels. And you're not alone. So many of us have gone through something that was unfair or not right. And if you haven't, well, then I want to help you understand it. This is a super rare opportunity for you to hear what it feels like to be on the other side of injustice. So I wanna challenge you not to check out for the next few minutes. Remember, Part of doing something about injustice is learning to see it and listening to those who've experienced it, taking on God's care and compassion for those who've experienced it. To help us do that, let's look at a real experience from a real person who experienced real injustice, me. Let me tell you a story of what happened in eighth grade. See, we had a dance called the Sadie Hawkins dance. Now this isn't your typical dance. This is a dance where the girl asks you out. So I was walking in the hallway and there's this girl that I really liked and I was really hoping that she would ask me rather than all the other guys to this dance. And one day came and she approached me and asked me to the Sadie Hawkins dance. And of course I said, Yes. So before I took her to the dance, I had to meet her dad. Met her dad, we went, we had a big skate night for our school and her dad approached me and introduced himself to me and I introduced myself to him. And it wasn't until a couple of days later when the girl came back to me and said, hey Bobby, I won't be able to go with you to the dance. And so for years, I wondered why this was the case. You know, I was devastated. I was so sad. I didn't even go to the dance. I just stayed home and watched movies. So it was then a couple years later when I approached her and I said, hey, what was the reason that your dad didn't let me take you to the Sadie Hawkins dance? And she told me these words that changed my life. She said, my dad didn't let you take me to the dance because you're black. Literally because of my skin color. Now this, this moment changed my life. 
it just wrecked, it wrecked me that the reason that I couldn't take this girl was because of the color of my skin. And it was that moment that it completely changed the way I viewed myself. And maybe you can relate. Maybe you've experienced an injustice similar to what I just shared. Or maybe it's something totally different. Either way, you know the feeling. And it probably has you wondering, what do I do about injustice when it's happening to me, not just around me? Now, before we go on, I wanna say this. You don't deserve the injustice you've experienced. All the way back in the very beginning when God created the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, God tells us that we humans have value because we're made in his image. We might not be able to see God to know what he looks like, but we were created by him to show others more about who he is. And because of that, you have value. Nothing will ever, ever, ever change that. You are made to be treated with respect, and it's not your fault that you were born into a broken world with rules, traditions, and ideas about people. Those injustices you experience, they say a lot more about the brokenness and the hurt and the people who are putting you in that position than they do about you. That being said, let's take a look at some people who have experienced injustice together. See, in ancient times, there was a crazy king named Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this powerful guy had conquered and captured God's people. And let's just say he was used to getting his way. As a matter of fact, he decided to build a giant, and I mean giant golden statue that stood up to 90 feet tall. And then he ordered everyone to bow down and worship this statue whenever, and I mean whenever they heard music playing. And if they didn't, they would be thrown into a blazing fire. That's a lot, right? Well, there were three Jewish leaders named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hold on. That sounds like a rapper group, right? Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, like boom, boom, boom. See, these guys worship God, and because of that, they refused to bow down to the statue. Good for them, I say, right? But people who were loyal to Nebuchadnezzar had other things to say about it. They plotted against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and basically, they snitched to the king. Now, you can probably guess that the king wasn't at all thrilled by these news. Actually, the author of the book of the Bible where this story is found wrote down that in a furious rage, the king ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be captured. He gave them one more chance, and I mean just like one more chance, to bow down and worship when the music played, or they would be thrown into the blazing fire. But even in the face of this punishment, these three guys stood their ground and refused to worship anyone other than God himself. So, of course, the king was in full rage mode, like angry, like angry, like mad, and he ordered them to be thrown into the fire. And just like that, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tied up and thrown in. Now the flames were so hot, and get this, like this is, this is crazy. The flames were so hot that the soldiers that threw them in died from the heat. Insane, right? Now, we can all agree that this situation is totally and completely unfair. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wasn't fair. It wasn't right. And it certainly wasn't something that they deserved. So, what happened? Let's read. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted. I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Now we're not entirely sure who was in the fire with these men. Was it God? Was it Jesus? Was it an angel? Was it someone else? I don't know, but one thing is clear, that God did not allow them to be alone in this situation. He didn't leave them in the fire to burn by themselves. He didn't let them suffer or experience the injustice by themselves. And that's a big deal, because it shows us that the same is true for us. We don't have to experience injustice alone. In other words, when you experience injustice, you don't have to face it alone. You're never alone when you face injustice. In fact, Jesus demonstrated that when he came to earth. He came to be God with us. He could have came as a king or a powerful person, but instead, he came to this world as a baby. He came as a person who would experience all the things we experience, including injustice. See, scripture tells us that he understands how we feel when we are treated unfairly, and he stands with us in it. He goes into the fires of injustice right beside us so we don't have to do it alone. 
When you experience injustice, you don't have to face it alone. I love the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because when we take a closer look, every person in it gives us a different view of what injustice may look like. Maybe you totally relate to the three guys in the fire. You've experienced the suffering that goes along with injustice. Maybe you're experiencing it right now. If that's you, I want you to remember a few things. First, know that God is with you. He hears you. He made you in his image, and it means no matter what injustice you're experiencing, you have value, worth, and you're deserving of respect. And God doesn't want you to walk through what you're experiencing alone. Then share what you're experiencing. If you're experiencing injustice right now, like right now, or you're dealing with injustice that happened in the past, I'm so glad you're here because we want this to be a safe space for you to process that. We want to be people who stand up for you and stand beside you. So today, I wanna to encourage you to begin by sharing what you experienced. Maybe for you, that means sharing it with God in prayer, asking for him to remind you that you are not alone. Maybe for you, that means sharing with a trusted friend, a group leader, or an, another adult in your life that can help you. They're with you in this and they don't want you to be alone. So take that step and talk to them about what you've experienced. They just might be the very people God has sent in your life to stand in the fire with you. Also, keep going. The guys in the fire never stood down. They didn't give up. And I don't want you to either. If you're experiencing injustice, I want you to do something. Maybe that something is opening up to an adult. Maybe that something is standing up to yourself. Maybe that something is joining an organization who is already working against that injustice. Whatever it is, take a step and keep going. Of course, there's the other character in this story, King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, none of you are throwing people into a raging fire because they won't worship your statue. At least, I hope you're not. But I think there have been times when, if we could be honest, we could admit that we've participated in an injustice against someone else. Maybe we're more like the people in the crowd in this story. We've stood by and watched as injustice happened to someone else, and we didn't speak up or we didn't speak out. Maybe for you that was laughing along when your buddy made a racist joke or standing back while somebody got bullied at school, or being the bully, or listening to music that disrespects women, or watching comedians that make fun of other people's cultures, or allowing other people to take blame for your mistakes. How about if you made fun of a girl who couldn't afford new clothes? If that's you, I want you to know this. Just because you've been that person before doesn't mean you have to stay that person now. You can change. Maybe the best step you can take against injustice is making the change to be the person who doesn't contribute to injustice. You can talk to God about that too. You can ask him to help you see the places you've participated in injustice. You can ask him to give you the courage to make it right. And maybe once you find that courage, you can become the person in the crowd who's brave enough to speak up and speak out when someone is about to experience injustice. You can be the voice that stands up to injustice when you see it. Remember, when you experience injustice, you don't have to face it alone. That's why we have groups. Of all the people in the whole world, your group should be for you and listen to you. They should be praying with you and learning from you. And they should be encouraging you and cheering for you. Listen, this right now has the potential to be one of the most honest, raw, personal, and important group conversations you've ever had. You have the opportunity to see and care about the injustices happening right in front of you, within your group. I want everybody to show up to that. If you've experienced injustice, how can you let the group know you need support? If you haven't, or don't often, how can you listen and genuinely care for someone in your group? Maybe the first step is letting your leader be the person for you. Or maybe all that sounds a little too much right now. If that's you, I get it. Even if you don't talk to the whole group, I hope you talk to your leader. They signed up to do this because they want to be here for you. And maybe they can be a real human reminder that when you experience injustice, you don't have to face it alone. 